Good morning. I'm Leota Marks, and I welcome you to our worship today. Here at First AME Church, Kansas City, we are so thankful that you're tuning in to watch us today, and we believe your presence isn't accidental, but ordained by God. We would love for you to do a couple of things for us. Number one, connect with us in the chat and tell us where you are watching from. Number two, share any notes or highlights in the chat that God impresses on your heart today. Your feedback, remarks, and testimonies really help us to connect with each other and discover ways that God is speaking to each of us. Number three, feel free to grab a pen and paper to copy down notes that would be helpful throughout the week. Number four, at the end of the service, you'll be given a link to let us know if there's a next step that we can do to help you along your faith journey. We're excited to partner with you today and just praise God that you're here with us today. Also, this is first Sunday. Kevin! We'll take communion. So you're joining us for the first time. We welcome you to partake of communion with us. If you don't have a grape juice or unleavened bread available, you can use water or crackers or anything you have in your home. Because in our church, we believe that these items are simply symbolic of what Jesus has done for us and all of us who have accepted him as our Lord and Savior. Number five, everyone knows their house needs regular maintenance to keep things in good order. But we sometimes fail to recognize how much our home needs spiritual maintenance. Home Improvement is a six-part sermon series designed to help families build stronger homes. And finally, today is July 4th, and we celebrate Independence Day across the United States. In the dictionary, freedom is defined as the power to write to act, speak, or think without hindrance or restraint. That completely wraps up everything Christ has done for us. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are now free from the bondage of sin. God gave you a new nature and filled you with the Holy Spirit. So now, you are no longer under control of sinful nature. Because the Holy Spirit lives in you, you are free. You have eternal life, and you no longer have to pay the penalty for your sin. This is good news. Enjoy your freedom and live the life that Christ has given to you as being free to live now. Let's begin our worship with an invocation prayer to invite God into our service and into our hearts and pray that the Holy Spirit moves on each of us today. Amen. And again, welcome to First AME Church. And may God bless you. Good morning, saints. Let us humble our hearts and our minds in this moment of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, most gracious God, we come to you as humbly as we know how. Father God, you are worthy of all the praise, respect, and honor and glory. All belongs to you. We thank you for bringing us divinely into this place and time, waking us up this morning in our right mind to worship and praise you. You've been so good to us. With the help of the Holy Spirit, let us also find you in every good thing. We've come to direct our worship to you. We honor the author of our faith, the lover of our souls, the forgiver of our sins, and the provider of our salvation to all nations. Send your Holy Spirit right now. Lord, Send your Holy Spirit like a rushing wind. Lift us up 
so we may lift your name on high today and every day. We love you, Lord. We praise you. And we thank you with all our being. This is the day that the Lord hath made and we will be glad in it. Wash away what was and set our eyes and ears on what is and is to come in your name. Thank you, Almighty Father. Hear our prayer, Lord Jesus, in the precious name of the Holy One. We offer this prayer. Let the saints of God say amen. Sing high. 
What's the highest praise? We sing to the King of Kings. Hallelujah. One more time. Can we raise that with one voice? Hallelujah. You've been a good, good, good father. Yes, you have. Yes. You've been my shield. You've been my protector, Lord. Hallelujah. morning on this beautiful Sunday morning. Our readings this morning will come from both the Old and New Testaments. I will be reading from the New Living Translation. Our Old Testament reading is Isaiah 32 and 18. My people will live safety, live in safety, quietly at home. They will be at rest. The New Testament, Hebrews 3 and 4, for every house has a builder, but the one who built everything is God. The word of God for the people of God, praise be to God. Good morning. I have been given the awesome responsibility of offering appeal on this morning. We're going to look at the gospel according to Luke chapter six, verses 38 which says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. For with this measure, you can use and it will be measured back to you. Isn't that great news, saints? I want to take an opportunity to thank all of you for your constant support for kingdom building. I want to special thank those that came and gave us an offering for men's day. We are still trying to reach our goal. And so you can see on the screen, uh, we have three ways of giving through Giveify, through Cash App, or you can mail your offer to First Stanley Church, 1111 North 8th Street, Kansas City, Kansas, 66101. And always remember, God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen. And amen. <clears throat> God bless all of you this morning. And uh, we are certainly just grateful to God for what he's doing, what he's saying, and how he's speaking to us. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful day. And we are just grateful that you're with us. And uh, as you see, we're doing a little, do, doing some things differently this morning as we embark into a whole new summer series. I slide up so you can see a little summer series, right? Right there, so whatever, however that works. Um, so uh, we can think through um, what, how we might be engaged uh, in, this, in this wonderful summer. And so this summer we will be having some modified services, uh, services and uh, part of uh, our goal this summer is also to be teach, teachable and to teach and so I want you to do me a favor. If you can just phone a friend and text a friend and let them know to hop on our worship service even now uh, and let them know throughout the summer, we're gonna have uh, maybe even some, some um, team teaching a couple of times just to think through what does it mean for home improvement? Uh, I wanna say this as a, as a uh, nice plug, because uh, many of you know that uh, we are certainly excited in the AME church, and particularly in this area to, um, see the rededication of the Nicodemus AME Church in Nicodemus, Kansas. And many of our, our church members who are descendants of uh, Nicodemus, Kansas, and many of our church members in this area are all going to go down. That presiding elder uh, is coming down and many officials from the AME Church are coming. And we're excited to be uh, leaders of this uh, thank God for Miss Leota, who's on the committee, and Ash, Dr. Ashley Adams, who's been certainly a forerunner uh, to get this work done. And isn't it great that in this day and time, we can see the work of the Lord happening? Uh, I think this is a powerful moment for our history, but it's also a powerful moment for us as Black people and people of African descent, as also people who were in Kansas, right, to see uh, this beautiful uh, resurrection of this church, rededication of this church. And so we want to just sort of make a plug as we think about home improvement. 
uh, to think about the improvement that's happening here at the Nicodemus Church. And so that's, um, I think, Saturday, July the 31st. And there'll be a worship service on that Sunday, August the 1st. And so phone a friend, tell a friend about the great things that's happening. We don't tell our story far enough. And I'm saying it here uh, that we've got a great story to tell uh, as African Methodists, as well as Black people, as well as people of God. And we are certainly thankful for all of that that's happening. Uh, and so I wanted to just spotlight that um, so that you can write it in your calendar and look forward to the great work. And we celebrate God, don't we? Uh, to see the great work that's happening. It's not about us, but it's about what God is doing through the work of our hands. And so we, we, we're certainly grateful for that. <clears throat> um, at the same time, I, I would like to um, um, also just highlight one event that's going to happen this week. And of course, I would not be able to find the, the um, flyer for it. Uh, but we're certainly grateful for this Wednesday uh, to host a prayer walk. And what a great time to pray. And many of you who've been itching to get out of the house, uh, you can certainly meet us at First Amy Church. And I believe um, it's at 9 a.m. Please forgive me if I've said that wrong. Uh, you'll see um, this information on our Facebook page as well as in your email, as many of you have gotten that email, uh, to pray. And so bring your, your mask and your hand sanitizer, and your comfortable shoes. Don't bring your stilettos. Just leave those at home. Put on those tennis shoes and comfortable walking shoes, Sister Alma, and meet us at the church. And we can certainly come and pray for our community and pray for uh, all the great work that we're doing. We're so excited to have even one of our virtual members, uh, Susan Dickens, who's been, who's been worshiping with us to be in town. And so many of you who have not met Susan may want to meet her uh, at that Saturday morning. We're very excited for she's a prayer warrior. She's made connections with many of us already. And we're looking forward to all of us coming. Uh, if you can't make it out there, pray at home. Pray at home that we might be able to say, God, help our communities, help our, our, our family structures as we do the work of improvement. Amen and amen. And so thank, thankful for all those things. So listen, I want you to grab a pen and paper. Um, I'm, I'm praying to God that this turns out the way I hope it does, um, partly because I won't be preaching uh, for this series. I'm going to be teaching, going to be trying my best to really do what I think could be helpful um, for many of us, what, what, what needs to be helpful, what can be helpful as we think about the work we are doing uh, in our family. You see on the screen, um, and I wanna find, find another note I wanna use. You see on the screen, uh, probably a very familiar image, uh, which is taken from a show, I, mean, I know many of you have seen it, Dom, uh, Brother White, uh, so, a show called Home Improvement, it used to come on. Uh, on television, and it featured Tim, the tool man tailor. Do y'all remember that? Am I, am I the only one that watched that, Sister Sister Stephanie? Am I the only one that watched it? And, and he was sort of like the archetype, the prototype of a stereotypical man. He was strong, and he worked with tools. I even brought out a couple of my own tools today, um, 10 points, and you can even identify these kind of things, right? I think the first thing my dad taught me was the difference between a, a, a Phillips, come on, y'all, a screwdriver, yeah, uh, and, and look, and now I can't even remember the name of the, of the other field, screwdriver, right? So, 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 how do you learn those tools? And 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 one of the things that I thought was was powerful, was helpful, uh, brother Derek, was that he had a show called Tool Time. Yeah, Tool Time. Um, and if you have, he had this phrase that if you have a job to do, y'all remember that, and you want to do it well and you want to do it fast, he says, "What do you need?" Y'all remember that phrase? The answer was, you always need more power. Okay, are you listening, y'all? You need more power. And I kept thinking, and Ms. Leota has alluded to uh, uh, the same kind of idea uh, in, our, in, our, um, in her welcome today, that, that not only do we have uh, natural things that we do, right? Everybody needs to sort of regularly update your house. I remember in my own house, we had what we call spring cleaning. We had to go and, 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 and it wasn't even spring cleaning. Um, Sister Rhonda, we had Saturday morning cleaning where we had to wake up and clean the bathrooms and wake up. And we did that to our, our own uh, Sister Janice, I see you nodding your head, so I'm not, I'm not by myself, right, Sister Danita, that we, we did this type of cleaning, right? I remember, you know, um, having to, to clean the baseboards. I remember having to sweep the porch, and I kept thinking, why would you have to sweep a porch when it's going to get dirty anyway? But that was part of what we learned, those values. And everybody uh, knows our house needs that regular maintenance. Sister Melba, Brother Gerald, where your house needs that nat natural maintenance, but we sometimes fail to recognize how much our own spiritual homes 
need some maintenance. And so for the whole month of, uh, um, of, 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 we said six, six weeks, but it may be for the month of July and for August to think through uh, this idea of home improvement and the home being you and I as individuals, but also those who are connected to us. So if you are single and you don't have anybody in your home, it's still necessary, right? For us to think about how we relate even in our own homes, right? Or how we relate to our friends, how we relate to our family and how we can certainly be um, the people of God. So I'm excited today. Uh, and I'm gonna pray that y'all get the word out. And I'm apologizing as if you came to hear a, a sermon and I can still, I know, la, la, la. if you need a tune in, I'll, I'll refer you back to our, our online uh, Facebook videos that you can go back and hear all of that. But today we just want to be teaching, teaching. And I want you to get your Bibles and get your pads or your, you write on your phone, because I want to really be helpful as we think about how we can certainly build uh, uh, better families, how we can build and, and, and be, be better people of God. <clears throat> so so the, today, um, um, and um, I, I say this because uh, on Friday, when I went out to, to, to dinner with, with, with some of our church uh, families, that one of the conversations that, that uh, Brother Shane and Dr. Ashley and I were talking about is I really wanted to preach on rooms. And I think I may have time to get there. Like, what does it mean uh, for a kitchen? If we, if we preach on, for, for example, the kitchen. Because as you know, that's the place where, where creativity is, is, occurs. That's the place, the, 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 that's the sort of the, the place where things happen. It's the place where we give our heart and our attention and we nourish each other, right? So I'm, I, at some point you'll see different ideas come out. But today I wanna talk to you about how to improve communication, okay? How to improve communication, particularly within our family unit. How do we commu um, um, improve communications with our family unit? Now, now, think about this for a moment. Communication is the sharing or exchanging of information. It's uh, particularly along with the emotions which accompany the information uh, shared between individuals or groups of individuals, right? So you have this exchanging of information, but you also have the emotions. Uh, you probably have been like me, that, that, we, that there's that old phrase that it's not what you say, <laughs> but how you say it that, 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 that I'm still working on. <laughs> I'm still working on that, right? How, how do you say that? So when you communicate, you not only share what you think about something, think about a particular matter, right? But you also share how you feel about that matter. Oh God, this is good already for me. And so, and, 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 and I'm saying this, that I'm preaching to me first, y'all. I'm preaching to me first. And so if it happens to relate, just know I'm not stepping on y'all toes. I ain't been listening to your conversations. I'm actually telling what I know I need to hear as pastor, but also what we need to hear as people of God. All right, let's go, y'all. So communication, I want you to write this down, involves a process, okay? It's a process. It is not an end goal, it's the process, all right? You actually say something and you know what you, uh, uh, what, what you think you are saying uh, when you say what you say. Then others who are listening to you hear what, the, what you say, <laughs> but then uh, may hear what you say in a different way than what you intended for it to be heard. Then the people who hear you respond to you on the basis of what they thought you, um, they heard you say and how they felt about what they thought you were saying. <laughs> then you hear what they said, but you may not know exactly what they meant when they said what they said, but you think that maybe you do. And so you respond to what you think they said. Are you confused? <laughs> Yes, me too. And I, I did that purposely because that's exactly how confusing this whole matter of communication is and talking in the family can be. Okay, so y'all buckle up your seatbelts, right? Because I'm saying this because it's the, the, the communication, uh, it, uh, uh, the glue to communication is commitment. Okay, commitment is the glue that holds all this together. So I'm praying, and my prayer is that as we go through this series, that you will be even more committed, right? In terms of the ways in which we, we, we improve our homes. How do we be more committed? And it is the glue that keeps that family together, right? The, com the commitment piece. Thank God for mothers who are committed to their families, right? Thank God for fathers who are committed to their families. Thank God for little brothers. That, that, that still can deal with big sisters, right? The commitment that we have, but the oil of the family for home improvement is really communication, okay? So commitment is the glue that keeps it together, but the oil for family, for, for let me say for home improvement is really communication, <laughs> okay? All right, so it's, you know, it's that oil that keeps things running smoothly. 
in the family. It, it is that, that the oil of conversation, oil of communication, uh, which, which helps us to relate to one another effectively. Okay, and, and, and to say things we want to say in the ways that we want to say them. All right, so, 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 so listen to this, y'all, because one of the things I love about sort of this idea of communication is the reminder that, uh, that, that, that there are always those beautiful moments when people first get engaged and they're planning to get married, right? And, and, and one of the main things that they always say to me, even in couples counseling, is that they, they love their ability to, to, to communicate and to talk to each other. Y'all, do y'all remember what that time was like for you, right? Where, that you hear newly engaged couples say things like, we just love each other, or, 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 or we just stay up all night long talking on the phone. Sometimes I just want to hear him breathe. Right? <laughs> or, or I just feel so open with her that I can just tell her anything, right? And, 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 and that's marvelous. And, and, and I love how, how sometimes they say, we just feel like we're soulmates, right? Like, oh, we just feel like we just, con we just belong together. We just connected together, mm -mm -mm, right? And, and one of the questions that I ask, even in couples counseling, is not how well you get along together, but how well you manage conflict. I'm preaching already. This is so good to me. How, how well you manage conflict because it is not the, the indicator for relationship success, right? And I'm talking about between uh, you know, couples, but I mean, it could apply between church members. It's not how well we get along when things are going well, but how we manage conflict. And conflict, right, will always happen. And so, so it's the inability to manage conflicts that lead to, Brother Michael, things like, like you, you might hear things like, well, we just didn't understand each other. Or you may hear things like, somehow we just couldn't seem to, to get on the same page. Or you may hear things like, we just don't relate to each other. We really don't even talk to each other anymore. I mean, there are some couples, and I know of some couples that actually live in two bedrooms, right? Because the communication piece, the relationship piece has certainly changed a bit where, 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 where the conflict um, the management of conflict uh, is not what, it, what we want it to be, all right? And so I want to talk about these things today about communication, right, as part of home improvement so that we don't sabotage what we have. Mm, I love that word. We don't want to sabotage what we have. I mean, we, 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 and, and I'm talking to couples. I'm talking to church members. I'm talking to people in the body of Christ. And I want to use today Ephesians 4. Rhonda read in her um, um, uh, scripture reading uh, a couple of scriptures talking about building and talking about home and how God, right, is the one that does all of it. He, he creates everything. And I want to use Ephesians chapter four, and we'll, we'll be here for a little bit, um, to talk to you about how, how we might have these family talks, right? Have you ever had that? If you've been in relationships, you've been married, and they say, we need to talk when you get home. I used to hate that, right? Come on. Like, you, you hate when they say, we, we, we need to talk. And I'm like, oh, Lord, what have I done now? That whole idea that talking may be negative. But I want to re rethink that uh, idea of what does it mean to, 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 to have a family talk? Uh, because I think one of the clearest examples could be uh, Ephesians chapter four, okay? So let me start off today by saying that there are certainly all kinds of communications, right? There, there's communication of time, right? Where you spend time with each other, significant time communicating concerns and maybe showing your interest in them, right? There's a communication of gifts, some of us are like gift givers and we love giving and making people feel good, even if it's just baking a piece of cake, right? Uh, or baking a cookie or doing a, a nice meal, right? Or running a bath water, whatever that thing is. When you give somebody something, you are communicating with them. So you have the gift of time, uh, uh, the, uh, the communication of time, the communication of gift, but you also have the communication of touch, right? So, so when you touch someone, even when I was um, able to touch my mom and hold her hand, as we, you know, that's that idea is, is communicating to somebody uh, that you care about them, right? But I want to think prim primarily today about communicating with words, okay? <laughs> communicating with words. And when you uh, read these verses from Ephesians 4, it talks about and highlights the importance of communicating with our words, right? We learn some, some crucial principles about how families, how people of God ought to talk, ought to communicate, ought to use our words with each other. So, 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 so just think for a moment, you know, if you were thinking for um, this series, when was the last time you sat together with your family and just had a good talk? When was the last time you, 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 you know, you know, when you had that moment, you took, you know, and, and, and you're thinking back now, what took place in that moment? You know, I, and many of us sometimes only gather because of funerals. Um, but, but, but I still remember uh, Brother Hall, Sister Hall, 
sitting at the same dinner table together, my mom, my dad, you know, and at some point we got so busy, we didn't do those things. But what was the last time you sat together with your family and just had a good talk, all right? You know, was it fruitful? Was it fulfilling? <laughs> was it awkward? All right, and, and, and so that's what we're gonna go today. And I wanna give you three words. I want you to write them down and remember them because I want us to keep meditating on this as we go for, for this series. And particularly today is that I wanna think about the need to eliminate some things eliminate. Uh, and there's some things that I think we ought to then in, uh, integrate. And then there are some things we ought to appropriate. All right, so what things do we need to eliminate? What things do we need to in, uh, integrate? And then what are some things we need to appropriate? Right? Let's talk, y'all. Can we talk family? I'm calling us family. <laughs> We're all in the family together. Let's talk, y'all. Let's do it. All right. So, so we're in Ephesians chapter four, and I'm going to just, you know, I may not get to everything today. I may have to push some things into next, next week. And so this is what's beautiful about these series is that if you miss a Sunday or that, hey, I got to go to the bathroom or, hey, my, my, my reception is not working as well, you can certainly, we can keep sort of um, diving into this so we can see a nice connected thread. All right, here we go. Look at verse 25, because one of the things right, that we have to eliminate, right, eliminate some problems, what I want to call it, eliminate some problems, is found in verse 25, okay, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25, where it says, wherefore putting away lying, mm. all right, so the first thing, we, we have to eliminate dishonest elements, I wrote that down, dishonest elements, I might have three of those D's, by the way, so if you're, you know, if you like Janice Scott, who knows how to, to do, um, what do you call them? Those notes and organize everything well. This is just the first three Ds. Dishonest elements. You've got verse 25. Wherefore, put in away uh, lying. We've got to everybody eliminate lying. Yeah, because that's a dishonest element. Lies in a family terminate trust. It's hard to trust when we haven't been honest. Wow. That when you lie to your mate or lie to your children or lie to your parents, these lies become termites that eat away at trust. Wow, there are some relationships that, that are still working to regain trust, right? There's certain church committee members, when we get together, we still trying to realize, do I trust you, <laughs> right? And, and so lies can be lethal and, and, and crazy. So, that, so, so the idea of dishonest elements that when you speak lies, when you deal with your family on the basis of lies, or when you work with church members on, on the foundation of lies, it can be deadly to our work relationship, right? So wherefore putting away lying and according uh, to the Bible, you know, we all are born liars. Look at Psalms 58 and three, which says that the wicked are estranged from the womb uh, and they go astray as soon as they become, I mean, they, they, they are born speaking lies. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I still remember even as a little kid, you know, there was stuff I, I didn't even realize I was lying. My mama said, did you touch that? I'm like, no, I didn't. But knowing I did, but you, 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 even as a little child, kind of learn to be dishonest, right? So, so we are born in this sinful nature. We're born knowing how to tell lies, right? And, and can I just be honest? We're born that way, and we get a lot of practice on improving <laughs> how, how to how to how to simply uh, uh, how to tell lies. We 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 kind of work on it. We get really really good at it. Some of y'all probably got some shoes or some receipts that you. You ain't really, you know, been all completely honest with. Come on, y'all. Sometimes it ain't even a bad thing. It's something like, you know, it, it, it was on sale, but you didn't say how much of a sale it was, right? <laughs> so, so you see, you see, you see um, hopefully you see what I'm saying here, that, that we've got to learn how to eliminate lying, right? That we got to put away those things. Here's the second element that you find in verse 29, is that we ought to let no corrupt communication proceed out of our mouths, Right? So, so not only do we want to eliminate, here it is, Janice, dishonest elements, but, uh, but, but, but we also have to eliminate distasteful elements, the things that come out of our mouth, distasteful elements. So you have dishonest, um, that the, the idea of, of, of lying, verse 25, but 29 shows us that, that not only is it dishonest elements, but there are distasteful elements that come out of our mouth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, right? So, so let's talk about what the corrupt communications are. The word corrupt, y'all, if, you, if you're trying to get to the etymology of the word, really refers to this overripe fruit or rotten fish. And I think I just think about that for a moment when I have had, maybe you've had it in your refrigerator, something that just got old and got rotten and got stale. You can walk into a house and there's times I walked and realized I didn't take the trash out 
but I had cooked chicken and that little styrofoam thing that I threw in there, it tells me <laughs> that it's rotten, right? And so the word corrupt refers to something that is rotten or something that is overripe, like overripe fruit or, or even rotten fish. And, and, and these are some of the elements of corrupt communication that we have to really get out of our conversations, right? So watch this, y'all. The process is like this. Sometimes it starts off as complaining, okay? And there actually isn't anything wrong when you have a concern, right? A complaint, right? That's not, that's not the problem. Um, there is a place for registering legitimate complaints, right, in the family. Most of us, however, find a sore and we pick at it at, uh, hoping for a reaction. <laughs> we, we sort of pick at it. But we move from complaining to um, criticism. I'm hoping I'm helping you now. Listen, y'all. We move from complaining to criticism. And nobody wants to be criticized. Right. If I didn't do something right and you go, I wish you would have um, 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 I, I wish you would have um, closed the refrigerator back. Well, that's a that's a complaint. But when we do things, what we say, for example, you never do. You never close the refrigerator back <laughs> or you always do stuff like that or, or why are you always. Um, prone to make mistakes every time. Every time you host to do it, you, you are always can I can I help y'all? There is no situation where that the, there is always no one is ever doing something or someone is uh, is always doing something right like we say that kind of thing in the moment because of in our criticisms, we kind of kind of hyper uh, what's the word we, we, we hyperflate if that's even a word, um, some of the things that would, would just be normalized. Um, and so so you move from from complaining to come on y'all to to criticism to contempt. Okay, teach, Pastor. Teach, teach. Oh God, come on now. I'm, I'm talking about my, my previous relationships where where I people know sometimes I can be to the point where I can move from 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 uh, and I don't mean uh, you know romantic relationships. I'm just talking about relationships, even friendships, right? Those kind of connections where um, you can move from uh, complaining to to um, criticism to contempt and nobody, when a person begins to have contempt for, for members of their family, right? Where you just pacify, you sort of occupy in space, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, you start to hear words like, well, you know, you're just so stupid. Wow, you're just so dumb. How can you be so ugly? I hope I'm talking to somebody because I know I'm not the only person that has heard these kind of words from family, from church family, right? Uh, and so, 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 so what am I saying that all of that stuff ought to be eliminated in our communication, right? I love this because not only I'm, I'm moving fast here, are we to, to eliminate lying? That's the dishonest elements, but we're also supposed to, to, to eliminate corrupt communication, right? That's distasteful um, elements, but look at verse 31, that there, there are some dangerous elements that need to be eliminated from our family. Are you following? Look at verse 31. 31 says that let's put away or let all bitterness be put away. Bitterness is anger turned in. <laughs> Woo! You know, there was an old song um, um, by, by Vesta. So I know y'all, some of y'all not as old as I am, so you may not remember. She sang a song called Congratulations. But she saw her old, her old romance getting married. And I thought, she didn't even know. She found out by seeing it, right? You know, I saw a friend on the street. The friend said, today's your wedding. Like, I'm finding out. And what does that mean that that bitterness is really anger that's turned in? Unresolved issues, right? Uh, but the Bible says 31, what? Let all bitterness be put away. Right? It refers to a, a bitter root that produces bitter fruit. Ain't that sad? I mean, there's times I've gone to the grocery store and I got a beautiful watermelon. Come on, y'all. I mean, like, I, that thing was beautiful on the outside. I cut that thing open and it just like, it just was just as, like eating water, right? And it, it just, it just didn't match up. So bitter roots produce bitter fruit, right? And I think about there's a connection between roots and the wraps that we take, 
right? So this is what I even tell preachers when they first take congregations, right? That you can have all the seminary training in the world, but until you understand the roots of that congregation and the routes that have led to you now being pastor, you, you, you can't do anything. You have to understand the connection between roots and routes, okay? So, so, so watch this, y'all. It goes on to say, verse 31, to put away bitterness, but we also must avoid wrath. Okay, I'm, I'm giving you a couple of these, of these things. The word wrath really means an implosion. And I mean, it's not implosion, an explosion. Woo! <laughs> Have y'all been around people that just, that just explode? I mean, I mean, it means like an eruption, right? We get the word thermos from there. You know the word like thermonuclear? Think about the word thermo. What does that mean to have wrath? Thermonuclear. There are families where there are probably some persons who blow up. I mean, they, they, they blow up really quickly. Uh, and a person who makes the biggest scene is the one who wins the family argument, right? Uh, but the Bible said we ought to eliminate that, all right? So stay with me, y'all. So bitterness, we ought to eliminate. Wrath, we have to eliminate. The next word is what? Anger. You see it? A lot of this is, I'm using the King James Version, is wrath, I mean, it's anger. The word really means rising anger. Ooh, look at that. It, it becomes, I mean, it means to become red-faced. Have you seen some people who get so mad that their face turns red? Ooh, I mean, that's, 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 that's real mad. It is the idea of someone holding onto their anger as it grows and grows. I mean, holding onto it, right? It is a picture of rising anger. It's the picture of, of brooding over things and allowing them to take root in the heart. I actually used to think that when people got older, they got mean. But I learned that wasn't the case. Some of those old um, ladies who were, were mean, old were actually mean young. Some of those men who were cantankerous, that was what my grandma used to say, cantankerous, were actually not cantankerous because they got older. They were cantankerous 20 years ago. <laughs> but we ought to eliminate sort of the idea of anger. Then it goes on, two more, clamor. You see it? The word clamor really means loud speaking. I mean, it refers to shouting. And some, some families, there's that person who, who, who really is the loudest, right? <laughs> like you, or, or a church member that's the loudest, right? The pastor that's the loudest, the presiding elders that are, I could go on, y'all, right? You, you get where I'm going. It, it, because of, 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 of clamor, loud speaking. Um, uh, but it ends with evil speaking. You see that? That sort of phrase refers to injurious speech, the kind of speech that injures somebody. It's an attempt to hurt another person with our words. This happens when we talk down to people. It happens when we say hurtful things to each other. It happens when we use words to wound. This is the, 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 the one reminder to all of us, right? That, that we have to be so careful that we don't say that one thing that we know is going to wound. Now, I'm going to be honest. That's how I was. I, I, I knew what I could say to hurt somebody because I was good with words. And, and the Lord had to rebuke me and show me how bad that was, that even though you could be right, you're still wrong. Come on, y'all. It wasn't, it wasn't that what I said was wrong. Because what I said was, you know, it was, it was factual information. But the way I used it, the words as weapons was wrong. Right? And so, so evil speaking is actually speech that's injurious. It's, the, it's an attempt to hurt somebody with our words. You just like your mama. Like, you know, you, we say that kind of like, oh, I can't believe you just said that. Like, that's the one thing you know that would hurt me. Right? You know you can't keep no job. In. Like, we say these things. <laughs> and so we got to be careful to put away those things. Right? So, 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 so let me stretch it. I got like 10 minutes. Let me stretch this now. So that was all about eliminating problems. I'm praying to, to God today that we learn how to use this rest of the week to eliminate some stuff. God, right now, there are some things that I know I got to get rid of. I got to eliminate in my communication. If I'm going to do some health home improvement, I really want to call this Family Matters. Y'all remember that show, Family Matters, but I couldn't make it. Home improvement seemed to work better. But there are some things in the family that we've got to improve. And there are some things to eliminate. What do you need to eliminate out of that list? Not only do we want to eliminate some problems, here's the second one, y'all. We're probably going to end with this today. How do we in integrate some principles? 
Thank you, God. <laughs> I didn't want to leave y'all with the negative. I need to at least leave with some hope because we have to eliminate some problems. But then how do we integrate some principles? Uh, yeah, look at verse 25 again. I hope I'm helping somebody today. Hope I'm helping somebody today. I'm just teaching. I know it's different, right? Look at that verse 25. Wherefore, putting away lying. Here it is, y'all. Here's the principle. Speak truth with your neighbor. Oh my God. Okay, okay. So put away a lying. That's the thing I need to eliminate. But then, then speak truth with your neighbor. Some things you want to put off and some things you got to put on. I see you, Susan. Yeah, yeah. Some things you got to put off and some things you got to put on. You say uh, that that's talking about neighbors, but, 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 but the closest neighbors are really those who live in your house. <laughs> Surprise, right? The closest neighbors are those who we worship with. That's our family, right? So you put in your family <clears throat> and in your family talks this idea of truthfulness, right? Speak truth with your neighbor, right? right? And I can hear somebody saying, that's right down my line, pastor, because I tell them the truth in my family anyway. I give them a piece of my mind. <laughs> yeah, you know, they always say you got to be careful because you may not have too much peace left. <laughs> at, least, at least hold on a little bit. You got to spare, right? But look at verse 15. Speaking the truth, what? In love. Oh, my God. Sometimes I, the, the Bible just be getting all in. I'm like, oh, speaking the truth in love. Yeah, some people claim that they are being truthful because, you know, because um, the truth of the matter is that, that, that they are, are, are really being brutal. I'm being truthful, but no, no, it's, but you're being brutal and you can be cruel even with the truth. <laughs> Again, I'm preaching to myself first. You, you could be cruel even though you're being truthful. And just because something is true doesn't mean it needs to be said. Right? We're told to speak the truth in love. I mean, our families ought to be built on truth and ought to be built on love. Uh, but we must also be careful to bring truth in our homes in the right way, right? Mm. Speak truth with love. And there's several layers, and I'm going to end here, y'all, uh, of communication with the family. If you want to write some of these down, I think this will be helpful for us, right? Not only do you have truthfulness, but go back to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 now. The negative side, right, of communication is that we ought to let no corrupt communication proceed out of our mouths. That's the negative part. But the positive side of communication, right, this idea of home improvement on communication is found uh, here where it says, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Wow. Can I say that again? We have the negative side. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But the positive side from Ephesians 4.29 is that, that, that but, in terms of communications, but that which is good to the use of the edifying that it may minister grace into the hearers. That means that we not only have to put truthfulness on, right, into our conversations, but we must also be sure to include the elements of kindness. Oh, God, help us. I mean, that which is good to the use of edifying. Ah, help us, God. Mm. Yeah. Huh. So, so what am I saying here? Let's wrap up some. We ought to do a couple things. Learn to attack the problem and not the people. Okay. I feel like I'm out here by myself. Ain't nobody said amen yet. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm by myself. We ought to learn to attack the problem not the people. I said this to you before that I saw the study and the study was talking about the reasons why people join a congregation, join a church. And it was not because of the music. And you know, music pulls. I mean, I've been in music my entire life. Music pulls people. We love a good song and, and, and people love music. I think choirs that can sing like, like nobody's business and people came just to hear the music, right? It was not the music. That's not why people joined the congregation. It was not the preaching. Oh, 
Let, go, let, me, let me pull my, let me pick my face up off the ground, right? It wasn't the preaching. Preaching wasn't the number one reason. It was important, but it wasn't the reason why people joined a congregation. You know where I'm going with this? The reason that people decided to join a church was because they felt loved. I almost want to cry right there because I have been in congregations where I didn't feel loved. What does it mean to be in community with people where you don't feel as though um, that, that, that you... Uh, you, you could be around people in the community and still feel like an outsider. You can be around people and still feel alone. How do we learn to attack the problem and not the people? You know what donkeys do when they feel threatened? Some of y'all who lived on farms. They actually form a circle facing the enemy. Hallelujah. I mean, they begin to kick. And, 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 and they just kick one another, right? I mean, they think about what that is, that, that in me trying to, to, to be on the defense, I end up hurting the ones that are, that are in the circle with me, right? Uh, and and I, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say all of us are smarter than donkeys. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So are horses. They, they put their heads together and kick the enemy, but not one another. Hmm. Look at that. When problems arise in our families or in our churches, we should attack the enemy and not one another. First thing y'all learn, attack the problem, not the people. Second thing, and I'm almost done, learn to fix the problem and not the blame. Thank you, God. Learn to fix the problem and not the blame. Hmm? How can we work at not looking for someone to blame for the problem. I mean, how do we let everybody have an opportunity to express themselves and validate it? Every member of our family is valuable. Every member of our family is, is, is deserving to be heard, to speak up and to speak out and to have that voice not be put to blame. Why? Because everybody is what precious to God. <laughs> everybody is. God, God has given us yeah, uh, our family. You know, you, you we don't even have, a, 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 we, we can't even, what am I trying to say? We, we had no control over whose family we were going to be born in. Because <laughs> if the truth be told, some of us would have not have chosen our families. We wouldn't have done it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Let me say, say one more thing. I mean, I, I won't go, I won't, I'm just going to give them to you, write them down. We'll come back to it next time because I want to go to communion. Uh, but we got to learn to keep it private, not public. And learn when to bring it out. Or learn that when we bring it out, we got to pray it up. I won't have time to fix that right now, but you can see where I'm going, right? Learn to keep it private, not public. Learn that when you bring it up, uh, bring it out, you got to still pray it up. God, that's good to me. What do you need help with today? What do you need help with in, in terms of our home improvement? Do we need to learn to attack the problem? and not people that, that, is that what you need? Do you need to learn to fix the problem and not the blame, and not to blame? Do you need help with, with um, uh, learning to keep it private, not public? Or, or do you need help to learn that when you bring it out, you still gotta learn to pray it up? Yeah. What do you need? Number one, number two, number three, number four home improvement mm, yeah god what would happen if we start incorporating these things we so today we talked about eliminating some problems and integrating some principles um uh we'll probably get to a, another part you know as we go throughout the series but 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 let's 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 i don't know who i'm talking to today but but somebody needs to 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 work on on those things right we want to offer christ to you I'm going to give you a chance, an opportunity to, to, to just make a decision today. You see in our chat an opportunity to click on um, um, a link to learn more about how we can partner with you as we do home improvement. Let's pray real quick before we go into uh, invitation and then communion. Father, you know what we need and what we stand in need of as we try to fix and do some maintenance and do some repairs. Thank you for how you have brought us to this space, not accidentally, 
but you brought us to this space to teach us, to help us to actually be kingdom people, not just church people, but to really find ourselves being in harmony, being the body of Christ. We give you praise for how you have met us where we are. And we're not here to, to stay in this place. You brought us to this place. You can certainly take us to where you need us to be in God. God, help us to forgive those as much as we need forgiveness for ourselves. We thank you now in advance that we're going to see families come together like never before, friendships that are going to be reformed, reshaped, and remade. We give you praise that there's someone who just needs to let it go so they can move deeper and uh, move, um, move in you. We give you praise that this is not by accident. In this sermon series, we pray that, God, we would be, have a strong foundation in you. We don't want the house to just look pretty. We want it to be strong, built solidly. So God, help us to examine ourselves that we might give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. doing something in our church. Feel something the Lord doing something even in your homes. Hallelujah. You can come to Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're worthy of our praise, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He's worthy of our praise.
And so we now come to our service of communion and, and it's our tradition in, in African Methodism and really Methodism uh, that we come to the Lord's table. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited to come uh, at this point, knowing that there's some work to be done. Uh, Jesus has done the finished work for all of us. And so we invite you to come to the table, you who are weary come. And our tradition, the solicitation, the invitation to partake of the Lord's Supper is open to everybody. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. It's open to everybody. I'm excited. I'm ex humbled by the, by the opportunity to come and receive the elements of our Lord. <clears throat> so whatever you have, you may not have um, some of these elements, but if you have a cracker, like Miss Leota said, or if you have uh, some other type of juice, it, it's all symbolic to what the Lord has done. <clears throat> so it says that ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are, and are in love and charity with your neighbor, those of you who intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take his holy sacrament to your comfort, making your humble confession to almighty God, meekly bowing or kneeling, um, as you are able. So I invite you to even read this with me as we pray together the general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness. Uh, wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. <clears throat> we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we all sit together. Amen prayer of consecration of the elements. Mighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby, um, <clears throat> thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O oh, merciful Father. We most humbly beseech you and grant that we, receiving these creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat, this is my body, which was broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. And so today, all of us across this Zoom and Facebook we come today as a collective body to take the bread, which was broken for us, amen, to preserve our bodies to everlasting life. I take it, feasting on it with thanksgiving in my heart. Mm. Likewise, take the, I take the blood of the New Testament, which is shared for you and for many for the remission of our sins, to preserve our soul and our body into everlasting life. I drink it with thanksgiving in my heart, knowing that Christ has set us free. Mm. Hallelujah to God. Mm. What can wash away our sins, y'all? Nothing. 
but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? <laughs> Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes us white as snow. No other fount I know. <laughs> Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. They say there's power, Sister Stephanie. Wonder working power. Yeah. In the blood of the lamb. Yeah. Power in the blood of the lamb. I want to invite Sister Janice to come as we, amen, in just a few moments do a benediction. But I got to go back to what Tim, the two man Taylor said about power, right? That if you have a job to do and you want to do it well, <laughs> what do you need? More power. But guess what, y'all? We've got the power that makes the difference. And so before Janice comes, let's all repeat the Lord's prayers. We end our service. Our, heaven, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us for evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We all said together, amen and amen. What a glorious first Sunday we're having, building up to be a better builder of ourselves, starting with building a better communication of the home improvement series. We need to have more power. We need to be more committed, be a better management of conflict, just not communicate in what we do, but use positive words. Three words to remember, eliminate, integrate, and appropriate. Eliminate the three Ds and integrate truth with love. Fix the problem without placing blame. So as we leave each other today, this morning, may the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hands of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the love of God go with us this day and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us.